6. I'll be reading out of the King James Version. You'll find similar words written. And they came to Jericho, and as he went out of Jericho with his disciples, and a great number of people followed, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the highway side begging. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth walking by, Bartimaeus began to cry out and say, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And many charged Bartimaeus that he should hold his peace. But he cried the more a great deal, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. And they called the blind man, saying to him, Be of good comfort, rise up, Jesus calleth thee. And Bartimaeus, casting away his garment, rose and came to Jesus. And Jesus answered and said to Bartimaeus, What wilt thou that I should do unto thee? The blind man said unto him, Lord, that I may receive my sight. And Jesus said to Bartimaeus, Go thy way, thy faith hath made thee whole. And immediately Bartimaeus received his sight and followed Jesus in the way. Amen. Blessed be the word of God. You may be seated. Oh, what did I say? What did I say, Matthew? I apologize. Mark chapter 10. I apologize. Y'all was probably reading like, where is he going? <laughs> but no wonder y'all was kind of crying. I said, son. See, that's, that's why I got my wife here. She, she keeps me on target. I apologize. That was Mark chapter 10, verse 46 through 52. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I was wondering why I was real quiet up there. <laughs> Amen. Thanks, man. <laughs> Amen. The book of Mark. The book of Mark, it unfolds this dual focus of Jesus, his life of service, and his life of sacrifice. That's what this entire book of Mark is about. It's about this unfolding, it's about this revealing of the service and sacrifice of our Savior. Look at your neighbor and say, service and sacrifice. It's funny how Jesus, as this great evangelist, as this great preacher, as this great teacher, any time before he taught the word of God, he served the needs of the community. He would heal the sick, restore sight to the blind. He would do all sorts of miracles in response to the need of a community. Then he would preach the word. Oh, we need to learn about that today. If we want people to come to church, if we want people to come to Christ in relationship, we need to first minister to their needs. Amen, somebody. Then they're ready to hear the word. Because see, you responded to my need. See, it's hard for me to hear Jesus when my stomach's rumbling from hunger. Amen. So at my knee, it's hard for me to hear Jesus when I got bill collectors knocking on my door. Amen. So at my knee, show me how to get a job. Yeah. Point me in the right direction. Yeah. And I love how Jesus, this great servant, he showed us the blueprint and mark of how to serve the needs of the community. This book, this book of Mark, the ancient title was Kata Markan, and that means according to Mark. The Latin Vulgate refers to Mark as Marcus, amen? The book of Mark illustrates how Jesus served the needs of the community and then how he ministered, but then he also, also prophesied about his pending death. He talked about this great sacrifice on how he would be offered up as this living sacrifice. This, this perfect lamb of God that will be sacrificed, amen, for all of our sins, past, present, and future. He would be that ultimate blood sacrifice. But in this text today, for a title, for a theme, a thought that I want to give you, 
cry louder. Cry louder. Because in this text, I want to unpack some things that you and I can walk away with today. Some practical pearls of wisdom that we can grab onto that can help us to be better servants, amen, and better individuals that we can give sacrificially of our time, talent, and resources, just like our Savior did. And the first thing I need you to understand, if you could write this down somewhere in your Bible margin or somewhere in, in, in your notes, write this down. The first thing I see in this text that I want to unpack is that Jesus is everywhere you need him to be. Amen. Jesus is everywhere you need him to be. Whether you're in China, India, North Philly, South Philly, Chester, Pennsylvania, been at home projects, wherever you are, wherever you are on the planet, Jesus is there. He's all places at all times. Jesus is everywhere you need him to be. So cry out to Christ. No matter what condition you're in, no matter where you are, Jesus is present and he's aware of your circumstances. Yes, he, is. he is everywhere you need him to be. I like that because I need him to know that sometimes I'm not perfect. Amen. Sometimes I don't dot all the I's. Sometimes I don't cross all the T's. Sometimes I'm not the best Mike Robinson I can be. Amen. But because Jesus is present in my life, as long as I'm in him, and as long as he is in me, I can be a better Mike than I was yesterday, than I am today. I always have a chance of being better. Yeah, you can throw up my past if you want to. But all I got to do is lean on Jesus. The author and the finisher of my faith. He's everywhere I need him to be. So when I'm sad, he's there. When I'm happy, he's there. When I don't know what to do, when I'm confused, and I don't have any answers. He's everywhere. I, I need him to be. Yeah. He's right there by my side yeah. to comfort me. Yeah. He's a lamp unto my feet yeah. to guide me. Yeah. He's a great comforter when everybody has forsaken me. Yeah. He gives me the encouragement yeah. and the inspiration yeah. I need when y'all all bail out on me. He's everywhere. I need him to be. And whether you live in the penthouse of Rittenhouse Square or whether you're homeless in the streets of North Philadelphia, God sees all, knows all, and can step in and bless you at any time. Nothing in your life takes Jesus by surprise. The text, verse 46 of our text today says, Jesus came to Jericho and he went out of Jericho and he saw this blind man called Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, who sat by the highway begging. Bartimaeus was handicapped with blindness, but some of us are handicapped with the sin that is so deep and so steep in our life that some of us can't see our way through certain life circumstances. See, some of us are blinded by the sins that so easily beset us, sins that we like to hold on to. Sins that if you knew that I was holding on to this one thing, maybe you might not like me so much. Amen. Those private sins that we keep to yeah. ourselves where we let God take over all parts of our life except this little aspect of our life yeah. that we just like to cling yeah. to, that yeah. sin nature yeah. that yeah. seems to hold us back. Yeah. Jesus wants us to let that go. Yeah. All right. And some of us are handicapped with this thing called sin. Uh -huh. Jericho, this Greek word for place of fragrance, it's a place known for fragrant plants like balsam and cypress and roses. The Bible says Jesus came and he went out of this place called Jericho. And I just have to ask you, all of us here today, what kind of fragrance are you giving off wow. to Jesus today? What kind of fragrance does your life give off to Christ is it a sweet-smelling Savior in the nostrils of our Savior? Or do you have a stench that's so funky with sin that repulses Christ? Uh -huh. yeah, yeah, yeah. For the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 2, verse 15 and 16, For we are unto God a sweet Savior of Christ, a sweet aroma, in other words, 
in them that are saved and in them that shall not perish. To the one we are the savior of death unto death and to the other the savior of life unto life who is sufficient for these things. In other words, some of us have the fragrance of eternal life on our life. That's those of us who are saved. We have this sweet fragrance, this sweet aroma of Christ on our life. But then Corinthians tells us there's some of us that have the stench of death on us. And I don't know about you, I've smelled the stench of death. Growing up, I've smelled dead bodies that were left in my neighborhood to rot. I've smelled dead animals that died from whatever. And if you've never smelled the stench of death, it has a very pungent smell. It's repulsive. It's something that you can't erase from your memory. And the Bible asks, what kind of fragrance does your life give off? Amen. Is it a sweet smelling Amen. fragrance? Or is it a stench, a funky scent, a bad attitude, a nasty disposition? You can answer that question. You know the answer to that question. And if you want to catch Jesus' attention, wear the fragrance of repentance. Wear yes. the fragrance of salvation. Yes. If you want to get Jesus' attention, wear that fragrance. My girl Rhonda one time complimented me. I wore this cologne about a year or so ago. I was rotating. I always try to get a new cologne. And I rotated in this new cologne called Izzy Miyake. And one time I gave Sister Rhonda a hug. She's like, ooh, you smell so good. She said, you got on Izzy Miyake. And I was impressed that she knew that. And it was a very popular fragrance. And I used to get so many compliments off of that. My wife even complimented. She's like, ooh, you need to put that back in rotation. She said, I like that one. And some of my colognes, she's like, I don't like that one. But she liked that Izzy Miyake. And that's the fragrance that our life should have, right where it should be a sweet smelling, here it is, fragrance right. in the nostrils of Christ, because he's everywhere you want to be, and he sees all, and he knows all, and so are you giving off to Christ this vibe, this fragrance that's appealing in your life, or do you have on this funky fragrance, like Mike Robinson does after he jogs or runs, God knows y'all don't want to be in the house when I take off my shoes after I'm running. My dogs bark. <laughs> and that's a funky smell. And some of us got to get rid of that funky smell in our life. And the word of God tells us that this man Bartimaeus was on the highway. As Jesus was exiting Jericho begging on the side of the highway. That word begging is a Greek word that means to ask for, to solicit, to approach with supplication. And supplication is just a fancy Bible word that means to ask someone in power for some help. Never be afraid to ask somebody in power for help. Oh, y'all ain't talking back to me. Some of us allow our selfish pride to get in the way from asking for help. Amen. If I don't know something I ask, look, I ask my son about the music he listens to. There's stuff I don't know about the new music these days. So I ask my son about stuff. I ask my daughter about different science stuff and, you know, things that like that that interest her and science and engineering and all that kind of stuff. Because that fascinates her. And I'll ask her about that kind of stuff. You know, there's some things you just don't know. So ask somebody. Watch this. There's some things you don't know spiritually. So ask somebody. Amen. Don't be afraid and don't allow your pride to stop you from moving forward. Amen. Psalms 121 verse 1 and 2 says, I will lift up my eyes into the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord which made heaven and earth. Ask God for some help in your life. If you need salvation, ask him. Because Jesus is everywhere you need him to be. Amen. Secondly, I need you to understand, give a shout out that counts, y'all. Give a shout out that counts. If you need to cry louder, make sure you give a shout out that counts. 
sometimes when I watch these award shows, you'll see the rappers and movie stars that are like, I want to give a shout out to my agent, I want to give a shout out to my mom, I want to give a shout out to my kids. They give a shout out to a loved one or somebody who is helpful and them getting to where they need to be. In the text, we see a shout out that counts. Amen, somebody. This, this, this desperate time that we're living in right now where we see violence in our streets, violence in our neighborhood, kids going missing every other day. Y'all better pray on that kind of stuff. Y'all, look, don't be asleep. There's stuff going on that's wicked in this world. And we see all of this desperate and wicked stuff going on in our world today, amen? And we need to give a shout out to the one that counts. Amen, somebody. Just like Bartimaeus said, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. He gave a shout out that counts. You and I got some issues in our life. You and I got some rough edges that need to be smoothed out. You and I got some family issues that we're struggling with. You and I got some money issues, some money problems, but we got more month than money. Some of us got some issues with our kids, but you and I need to get on our knees and give a shout out. That counts. Jesus, help me. Son of David, have mercy on me. Desperate times calls for desperate action. And I got to give a shout out that counts. Because God, if you don't help me, I'm going to lose my mind. God, if you don't step in, somebody's going to get cursed out. God, if you don't come in right now and give me a word, somebody's going to get tapped on the jaw. God, I need you. Son of David, have mercy on me. I know y'all got it together. I know y'all ain't got no problem. I'm talking about Pastor Mike Robinson. I know y'all got halos and you've been saved from birth, but I don't do it right all the time. I don't do right things. I don't say right things. And I don't think the right things all the time. I know y'all do, but I mess up sometimes. And sometimes I fall down. But I thank God that I can get back up in Christ. But the Bible says, a righteous man will fall seven times, but he gets right back up again, ready to fight, ready to get back in, ready to do it all. Come on now, get up, get on up, get on up. Get on up. Get on. So give a shout out that counts. Verse 47, Bartimaeus cries out with this desperate shout, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. He's giving Jesus credit, and he's also acknowledging his awesomeness. See, he's giving Jesus credit for coming through that bloodline of David. We know there was this immaculate conception with Mary, where God reduced himself into this nucleus and was born of a virgin Mary. But we know that bloodline on Joseph's side, it came through the line of David. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. And so in that shout out, Jesus says, thou son of David, yeah. giving recognition yeah. that he came from royalty. Woo! Not only royalty in heaven, Hallelujah. but King David royalty Hallelujah. on earth. And then he also makes here this reference to the fact that you come from a good bloodline. Yeah. Amen, somebody. Y'all remember the story of David, yeah. this little runny kid that nobody ever paid attention to. This little ruddy kid that with his bare hands, here it is, killed lions, tigers, and bears. Oh, God. Amen, somebody. Y'all know that little ruddy David kid where Jesse where presented all of his sons, amen. And, 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 and it was this contest, if you will, which son would be the anointed the king. And none of the sons was approved by God. And then the, the prophet asked, you got any more sons? And he said, yeah, I got one more son. This little shepherd boy out in the, out in the field with the sheep. Didn't smell right, didn't look right, didn't look like royalty at all. 
Amen. But he stayed in his lane, yeah, David did. And he raised the flock. And y'all ain't talking to me. It's a flock of greater he not. Amen, somebody. And when they put the oil over David, the oil just ran over. And then David went out to the battlefield to bring his brothers some lunch because nobody wanted to fight the giant Goliath who was giving the children of Israel a pain in the side. He was mocking our God, teasing the people of God, challenging them for the greatest champion of the people of God to come forth. Saul, the great king, was punking out all of the men of the armies of the children of Israel, punking out. David was like, hold on here. Hold on here. You ain't going to talk about my God. He said, this day, I'm going to have your head. And y'all know the story. He knocked Goliath down with his slingshot, cut off the giant's head. Amen, somebody. So when he said, Bartimaeus, when he said, Jesus, son of David, he was acknowledging royalty. He was acknowledging his bloodline, but he was also acknowledging the fact that you stand up against the impossibilities of life and that through you, God, there's nothing impossible for you. Because just like David, when he went up against Goliath and nobody thought that he could do it, with God, all things are possible. And in desperate situations, give Jesus a shout out that counts. Yes. Jesus saved Peter from drowning. When Peter shout out, Lord, save me. Uh -huh. Jesus saved his apostles from a stormy sea situation. Yes. Yes. When they shout out, Master, care us not that we perish. And Jesus said, Peace be still yes. to their situation. Yes. In the Old Testament, King Asa was the third king of Judah. Asa was strict in maintaining true worship and obedience of God. He brought the people of God back from idol worship. Asa got rid of all the idols of false gods yeah. that the people of Judah clung to. Asa demoted his own grandmother from royal leadership because she was still holding on to idol worship. And he was like, uh-uh, you may be my grandmother, yeah. but I got to put you in your place, yeah. grandma. When it comes to God, yeah. there should be no other God before him. So he demoted his grandmother. And before going into a major battle against one million Ethiopians, oh. one million Kush Kushites, that he went up against. That was impossible. His men were scared. He was a little intimidated. He was scared. This was an impossible battle. But Asa, amen somebody. He knew he had an ace in the spade called Jesus Christ. Asa gave a shout out. That count in 2 Chronicles 14, 11. Asa cried unto the Lord his God and said, Lord, he gave a shout out. That counts, y'all. It is nothing to thee to help us whether with many or with them that have no power. Lord, help us. Our Lord, our God, we rest on thee. And in thy name we go against this multitude. O Lord, thou art our God. Let not man prevail against thee. And when he gave that shout out, when he gave that prayer to God, God had a handful of Asa's men that conquered those one million Cushites. One of the most powerful armies. Over a million men were conquered by Asa and his men. Why? Because he gave a shout out that counts. No matter how big your giants are, give a shout out that counts. Jesus is everywhere you need him to be. And thirdly, prideful people will always try to push you into silent suffering. Prideful, selfish people will always try to push you into the silent suffering. Look at the text. The text lets us know that the people that were around Christ were about this me, myself, and I generation. This me, myself, and I mentality. Selfish, prideful people will always be about themselves and not about others. For the Bible says otherwise. The Bible says Let's esteem others yeah. more highly than ourselves. Yeah, so the emphasis is on how can I help lift you up and not so much my needs. Yes, I'm going to take care of me because I can't take care of you unless I take care of me first. But there's something wrong when I'm all about me, myself, and I and not you at all. Amen. And the Bible tells us there are a lot of people around Christ that day when Bartimaeus shot out. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. When he told him, shut up, man, leave this guy alone. Jesus don't want to deal with you, you bum, you beggar. 
shut up, man, just stay over there. And you're going to have people like that in life that are going to try to silence you. And you're going to be shouting out for some help, and you're going to be shouting out for some needs to be answered. And there's going to be some people that are going to say, shut up, I don't want to hear from you. Shut up, you elderly folk, I don't want to hear from you. Shut up, you black folk, I don't want to serve you. Shut up, you women, y'all don't have any place in our life. Shut up, you black men, just go to jail. There's going to have... You're going to have some people in this life yeah. who are all about themselves, enriching themselves, empowering themselves, and they can care less about you and I because it's all about them. Yeah. They're about this me, myself, and I mentality. And many people that were around Jesus tried to push Bartimaeus into silent suffering. They saw his poverty. They saw his handicap. They heard his desperation, and yet... They preferred that he suffer in silence. That's sick. Something's wrong when you have the ability to help somebody and you turn a blind eye. Something's wrong when you can say good morning, but in your heart, you don't say anything. Something's wrong when you know a family member needs you and they call you and you got an idea and you don't pick up the phone. And you know why they're calling you because they got no one else to call. And you turn your back on them. Something's wrong with that. And that's exactly what the crowd did to Bartimaeus. Look at verse 48. And many charged Bartimaeus that he should hold his peace. In other words, shut up with that shouting, Bartimaeus. Shut up with that praise. It don't take all that. Some of y'all were praising. I was watching y'all praising while Brother Bradley was here ministering the music. And y'all was really into the praise and worship. And somebody might have thought, they don't take all that. You don't know what they've been through. Yeah. You don't know how far God has brought them. Yeah. You don't know what trials and tribulations and shadows of death that they had to walk through to get here today. So when people are shouting and when people are praising God and when the mascara is running and when the tears are flowing, you don't know what Jesus had to do to get that person to where they are today. And so let people praise and let people shout out to our Savior. And don't let people block your blessing. Cry louder. Pray harder. Study the word more diligently. Exercise your faith in a greater way. Just don't allow others to block your blessings. Verse 48 says, And many charged Bartimaeus that he should hold his peace. But he cried more a great deal. Thou son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus was born from the family tree of David to conquer the Goliaths in our lives. That's the power I need. That's the power I want. There's this woman named Christine Kane. I love her. She's an Australian author, an evangelist. She travels the world teaching and preaching the gospel of Christ. Christine is the founder of A21 campaign, a global anti-human trafficking organization. She also is the founder of Propel Women, an organization that's designed to activate women to fulfill their God-given purpose in life. And there's this one quote that Christine has made that has been reposted over the internet for, for millions of posts and millions of times. This one quote that she gave years ago has been reposted millions of times inspiring people, motivating people to get closer to the Savior. And I love this quote. She says, the giant in front of you is never bigger than the God who lives in you. Amen, Amen. Amen somebody. Amen. The giant pill problems you got in your life, the giant relationship problems that stand before you, the giant work issues of the drama going on yeah. on your job. Yeah. Those giant issues yeah. that stand before you are not bigger than the God yeah. that dwells in you. Because yeah. greater is he that's in me than he that's in this world. There's nothing in this world bigger than our God. Amen. And whether the giant in front of you is police brutality, injustice in the courts, gun violence in our community, mm -hmm. toxic co-workers on the job, nasty neighbors, lying legislators and presidents, right. racist individuals, yeah. trifling family members, yeah. misogynistic individuals, yeah. uh, discriminating bankers, college loan debt, deadbeat dads. I just need you to understand 
cry out, Amen. Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on my situation. And keep in mind that you're going to have these prideful people. They're going to try to push you to suffer in silence. Always remember, give a shout out to the Savior. Amen. Yeah. And Jesus is everywhere you need him to be. And then I need you to understand, rise to your calling when called by Christ. Mm -hmm. Rise to your calling when called by Christ. Uh -huh. We all have something in our past that we're not proud of. The beauty of accepting your call in Christ is that he can forgive all of your sins. Yeah. Amen. Past, present, and future. Yeah, yeah. Verse 49 and verse 50 of Mark 10 says, Jesus stood still when he heard Bartimaeus crying out. And Jesus commanded Bartimaeus to be called. And they called the blind man, saying unto him, Be of good comfort, rise. Jesus calleth thee. And he, casting away his garment, rose and came to Christ. See, when you come to Christ, you got to, here it is, cast away your old self. Yeah. Amen, somebody. Yeah. You can't bring nasty cursing out Mike Robinson to the table. Amen. When you come to Christ, you got to leave that alone. If you're called by Christ. If you're called, you got to leave that alone. If you're called by Christ, amen, you got to leave that bad attitude at home. If you're called by Christ, amen, you got to leave, here it is, that foul speaking at home. If you're called by Christ, you got to sleep in your own bed. Amen, somebody. All right here, you got to sleep in your own bed. Amen. James Baldwin, one of the greatest American writers of all time. I love this brother, black writer, one of the greatest writers of all time. He once said this about God. If the concept of God has any validity or any use, it can only be to make us larger, freer, and more loving. If God cannot do this, then it is time that we get rid of God. In other words, let God be God. Let God be God. Let's stop playing his part. Let God be God. Because there's some things you and I can't handle. So let God be God. Turn it over to Jesus. He says, here it is. My burdens are what? Light. He says, my yoke is easy. My burdens are light. In other words, cast all your problems on him and let him deal with it. Because there's some stuff, having done all that you can do, the Bible just says stay and let God be God. And if God is who he says he is, yeah. I should be freer. Yeah. I should be loving, more loving. Yeah. I should be more caring. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. I should be more giving yeah. of my time, talent, and treasure. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I should be better yeah. if I claim to be yeah. a child yeah. of God. Yeah. I should never stay stale. Right. stuck into just being less than. Mm -hmm. If I'm in Christ, yeah. I've been called. Go I gotta cast away the old me yeah. and act brand new yeah. like I'm a part of his family. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Amen? So I gotta rise to the calling of Christ. I gotta remember prideful people will push, will try to push me into silent suffering. Mm -hmm. I gotta give a good shout out to the one that accounts. And Jesus is everywhere I want to be. And then lastly, Jesus is always attentive in answering your cry. Okay. Jesus is always attentive to answering your cry. Jesus is a very present help in time of trouble. He hears our prayer. Look at verse 51. And Jesus answered and said unto Bartimaeus, What do you want me to do? What shall I do for you, man? And Bartimaeus said unto Jesus, That I might receive my sight. And verse 52, And Jesus said unto him, Go thy way, thy faith hath made thee whole. And immediately, immediately, his sight came to him. Immediately. And I love what the text concludes with. It said, and after he got his healing, he followed him. He followed Jesus. Amen. Your persistence in prayer counts. The effectual, fervent prayer of the righteous availeth much. You never know when you'll stop Jesus in his tracks, when he'll listen 
to that crime. Some of you have been praying for weeks. Some of you have been praying for months. Some of you have been praying for years for a certain situation going on in your life. This man was blind since birth. He's a grown man now. But Jesus stopped in his tracks. In this blind man's manhood, years blind, years begging. And this one time he hears Jesus coming through the city. Thou son of David, have mercy on me. Man, you shut up. Stop with that, that, that militant march for black rights. Stop with your rights for women and equal pay for women for the same job. Stop with that. We don't want to hear that, man. Stop bothering Jesus with that stuff. Stop bothering Jesus with those prayers that, look, my, my marriage is falling apart and I got problems. I, I got problems on the job. I'm about to get fired. Man, shut up. Jesus don't want to hear about that. Be quiet, man. You got to cry louder. You got to hear this. Be desperate about your prayer. You got to mean what you say and say what you mean. And you keep praying because Jesus is listening. And when he does call you and when he does knock on your heart, don't shut the door. Uh-uh, let him in because Bartimaeus let him in. And when he let him in, the Bible says immediately he got his sight. And he wasn't, here it is, an ingrate. After he got his sight, the Bible said he followed Christ. He followed Christ, which was the least he could do. Jesus is always attentive to answering your cry. Rise to your calling in Christ. Prideful people will try to make you suffer in silence. Always remember to give a shout out to the one that counts. And remember, Jesus is everywhere you need him to be. Why? Because you need to cry louder. Jesus, son of people, have mercy on me. Let's make it out of here. Hallelujah.